Hello, YouTubers. I'm not an expert, and I want to show you something from my plane collection. This is a Stanley five and a half bench plane. Stanley Bailey type. It's a number five and a half, which is very popular with the YouTube experts. It's the size they like because it can kind of do everything. I picked this one up off of eBay uh, for a little over $100. They usually go for uh, between 100 and 150. They're kind of a less common size, so they get a little pricey. Uh, mine came with a regular Stanley blade, but it had a lot of pitting, and uh, I just didn't feel like it was worth the effort. I want to make something really nice out of this one, so I went and bought a Hawk blade. Hawk uh, has a, you can't buy them direct from Hawk anymore. I think they sold out to uh, Lee Valley. Um, but you can still get them. They're real nice blades. And I got the Hawk uh, chip breaker, which is a very beefy, thick piece of metal. You see that? Get up close and take a look at the Hawk chip breaker. I haven't sharpened this yet. It comes from the factory fairly sharp, but it, it's, it really needs to be honed. And they tell you that on their website. They're, they're, Hawk's been doing replacement blades for a long time. Um, these ones were made in France, it says, and I believe these are, I don't remember which model I bought. I think they're the O1s, uh, but that should, that should turn out to be real nice. Now I was dating this and it comes out as a type 15, I believe. I'll double check that, put it in the comments, but it has a plastic knob. So originally when I bought it, I thought it was a World War II production, but it doesn't have the other World, World War II uh, things. It has rosewood, not hardwood. It has a frog adjustment screw. You can't see that. There's a frog adjustment screw in there. I'll show you that later when I start taking it apart. Um, so maybe somebody replaced the knob with the, the plastic World War II type adjustment knob at some point. I'm tempted to invest in a fancy one. Um, Wood by Wright, I think it's Reed. They sell... Uh, knob and screw kit that are finer thread so you get a little wider range of adjustment and if this if it cleans up nice and everything works the way i want and it looks real good i might invest in that and uh they also sell uh the adjuster toggle here with uh, that you can resize and maybe maybe make it like you know really fancy we'll see uh, so this one dates the plain body dates to 1931-ish. Uh, I'll look that up. But the knob dates to World War II, which is interesting, because I don't think it's a World War II plane other than that, unless it was just made up from the in the factory from spare parts, which uh, it could be. Uh, most likely someone replaced the knob at some point in its life. Uh, it doesn't look like it had a whole lot of wear. It's in pretty good shape. So next step is going to be to... Uh, Sand the bottom, true that up, sand the sides up, make them pretty. Then I'll uh, work on restoring, you know, getting getting us all cleaned up, uh, sanding the frog, you know, or, or I'll use my uh, diamond stones to surface the frog up. And just, uh, we'll see if we can't get it as nice as it can be. All right, I have my uh, piece of granite countertop. That's what I have. You can use a tile from Home Depot or a piece of float glass or a piece of MDF. I've heard just plus a lot of people think that's flat enough. But I'm going to start trying to flatten the bottom just to see where it is. Now, I don't need to mark it because it has quite a bit of patina, but uh, we're going to see if we can't make some of that go away. Okay, got a good look. I got a low spot here, low spot here. So it needs a little bit of work. I'm gonna have to find a clamp, clamp this down and uh, get back to work. After about 10 minutes, see if you can get a good look. You see, I still have this low spot here to work on and a little low spot right there to work on. But otherwise, it's going pretty good. I'm using 80 grit. 
I'm just planing as if I'm planing wood. Only it's much easier because I don't have to be very accurate. And then I take my magnet, run it over the sandpaper, and you can see what I've been picking up. I'm going to keep going at this for a little bit. Been doing some sanding. Things are a bit messy. Let me show you what the bottom looks like now. Still a little hollow at the tip, but I'm going to say enough. There's a little hollow at the heel, but down the center it's flat, and it's flat all the way along. I think that's good enough. I did the sides, and uh, I might do it to a higher grit to make it a little shinier, but it's functional like it is. So I'm going to start cleaning it up. Cut the frog out, and I've polished the surfaces of the frog so that it'll sit nice and it sits without any, there's no rocking, you know, so it'll, it'll go down good. And I've got all the screws soaking in some, uh, so just some household cleanser. You see all that dirt that just came off of them. And that's just like uh, 409. It's not like you know, not, nothing, nothing rust specific. So we're coming along, uh, getting good. Maybe I'll soak, I don't know, you think that should get soaked in vinegar or should I just leave it like it is? It doesn't need to be cleaned up. It just needs the the bleeding edge there uh, cleaned up. But I mean, otherwise, it, it's perfectly functional with all its patina. Uh, maybe I'll just leave it patina. It's kind of cool looking. We'll see how it looks. After we get this thing completely cleaned, it's got a lot of dirt in it. So that's the next step. I'll be back when that's complete. By the time I got back upstairs from taking this down and washing it, it's already got some flash rust on it. Um, cast iron will flash rust very quickly. So I'm going to put some little JPW, as they call it, on here. And we'll wax it up real good and let it... And that should buff a little bit of flash rust off. So it is something you have to do with cast iron, especially if you're in a, a human environment, you definitely want that, that wax is cleaning. Wax uh, has a tiny bit of cleaning ability, not a lot, but it's wiping off the stuff that the sink didn't get. So let that sit on there. And I'll put some on here and we'll just wax the whole interior of it. Doesn't need a lot. Making a mess. I like to make a mess though. That's, that's an important part of working on the workshop, is making a mess. Some people like to clean it up. I'm more of a I'm more of a let's make the mess guy. All right, and all the other parts are soaking in a little WD-40 right now to get the water off of them. I could have done this too, I suppose, but I thought to take it downstairs with me. So we'll let that dry, and I'll start uh, reassembling things. Assembly time. I already put in the screw down here and the knob back on it. I'm going to put in... Screws that hold the frog down. And of course, we're going to put the screw over. Here we go. Everything has a thorough coat of uh, WD 40 on it, wiped off as much as possible. I don't know what the best thing to use on the insides is for rust prevention. You know, most people use wax of some sort. This is a popular choice. I'm going to push that forward to about there because that should work no matter where I put the. Okay, let's put Mr. Knob on. Put that back where you can see it a little better. Make a more interesting video if you can see what I'm doing.
And if I pop the blade in place, lever cap on, lever cap is far too loose. We'll tighten that down. There we go. Now, I still have to go sharpen it before I try a test cut. I'm going to do that, and then eventually I will uh, refinish the knob and the tote, and I think it'll look pretty slick. I am tempted to take the tote that I made and maybe make a knob for this and put these on the number seven, but I don't know. The number seven may not have the right thing for the front knob, so maybe not. All right, when I come back, I will have this sharpened and the wax polished off. Back from sharpening. All right, uh, pretend I, I just set it up so you can watch me do it in person, but I, I got it ready first. You know, I want to make sure it looks good. So let's try, see what we can get. I gotta get a lesson from Cosman. Find out how to make these things shoot up into the air like he does, but. Yeah, you get the idea. Let's hold that up. That's very, very thin. Right, thinner probably than you ever would need. I don't know if you can see the sunlight coming through that. That is paper thin. Let's do a few more. Now you'll have to use your imagination and imagine there we go. That one kind of shot up in the air. Imagine that they're billowing into the air. And then I'm holding the plane better. Here, a little practice. Anyway, that is the quietest plane I've ever used. It is really cutting nice. That hawk blade. And you can see, you can practically see through these. I can see the sunlight through it. I don't know if you can. So that is a, uh, it's capable of a very fine cut. You don't have to buy a brand new off the shelf plane if you're willing to put some time in. So that is uh, in ready to use state. I'm probably gonna uh, maybe replace the, the knob and tote with one of my homemade ones, now that I'm so happy with my homemade one. This is okay, but actually I think my homemade one was a little more comfortable for my hand. This is a little narrow, um, but we'll see. I'll probably end up with a bunch of extra plane parts when everything is said and done. Beautiful hawk blade, that thing is ready to go. Bottom looks very nice. It's plenty flat, definitely ready to do some planing. So there you go. Uh, a look at what it's like to fix a plane up. You've seen the, the pros do it, or at least the professional YouTubers do it, and some amateurs. And so there's one more amateur. I think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the work. I think I got a really nice plane out of that. Uh, all right, we'll catch you later.